There are several ways to upgrade to Jetpack 6 on a NVIDIA Jetson Orr Nano Developer Kit. Most of these involve installation from a host Ubuntu PC. There's plenty of options depending on how you plan on using your Orr Nano. The NVIDIA SDK Manager uses a front-end GUI to help with the workflow. Experienced developers may use the command line on the PC for installation and further development. However, for the Orr Nano, there is a way to simply flash a SD card and get Jetpack 6 goodness. Before we start, here are some notes. This method is meant for people who do not have access to an Ubuntu PC or find other methods overly technical. The trade-off is that you will be using the SD cards as your main system drive on the Jetson. Later in the video, we will add a solid state drive to store your data. The drive will be set up for use with Docker images so that you can leverage the Jetson AI community containers. It's amazing what is available. Note that if you're upgrading from Jetpack 5, you will not be able to go back afterwards using this method. Make sure that you make backups of everything before you start. We are following the instructions from the Jetson AI lab. Please ask any support questions on the official NVIDIA Jetson or Nano forum. Before starting the process, read through the instructions and watch the entire video to make sure that you understand what you're about to do. The entire process may take a couple of hours depending on your internet download speed and hardware, so an investment upfront is warranted. Okay, let's get started. We are going to upgrade from Jetpack 5 to Jetpack 6. Your Jetson is connected to a monitor, keyboard, mouse, and has internet access. You have a PC, Macintosh, or other machine that can flash a SD card connected to the internet. You have two 64 gigabyte or larger micro SD cards. You have enough free space on your host machine to store the Jetson drive images. You'll need at least 20 gigabytes. The next part's optional. We will install a solid state drive. One more thing. If your Jetson was manufactured before May 2024, you need to go through the Jetpack 5 to Jetpack 6 upgrade process, which will update the firmware. Let's prepare our Jetpack 5 SD card. We go to the Jetpack 5.1.3 page, go to the SD card image method, Jetson or a Nano Developer Kit, and start the download. The download is about 7.5 gigabytes. Took about four minutes on this system. Let's switch back over to the setup guide. We will flash the SD card with Bolina Etcher. We wander over to the Etcher site. Let's scroll down a little. Etcher supports a wide variety of platforms. Find the one that suits you. I'm using Ubuntu on a PC. Let's go find the release page. I'm running Ubuntu on a PC, so I'm going to grab the AMD64 Debian package. Now we install it, switch over to the downloads directory, follow the directions on the Etcher page for your platform, password. And we're ready to flash. Let's start up Etcher from the launcher. Flash from file. The download is in the downloads directory. We select the Jetpack 5 zip file that we downloaded previously. Select the target. Here's a pro tip. For better results, put the SD card in the SD card writer. That makes it easier to select when attempting to flash the card. And then, flash. Password. And off it goes. Okay, take our newly prepared SD card, place it in the Jetson and boot it up. The UEFI firmware is version 3.1. We will need to upgrade the firmware for Jetpack 5.1.3. Oh boy, licenses. I accept my fate. Let's go with English this time. I'm thinking English again. Let's continue. My name? My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. That's too much to type. I'll go with jim at jetsonhacks.com. And my password is worthless and weak. Let's go to the Max. Let's install Chromium while we are here. Chromium will install. And the Jetson will finish up the rest of its installation. Then the Jetson restarts. 
Now we take a look at the bootloader configuration status. It looks like it's finished configuring the bootloader, colon Q to get out of this. Now we need to reboot the system. The Jetson is updating to the latest Jetpack 5 firmware. There's a typo on the website for the Jetson instructions. It should be nvboot ctrl. This is what the command produces when it runs. This output is from a Jetpack 6 machine. We would expect 35.5.0 here. Now we install the QSPY updater for Jetpack 6. And we restart the Jetson. The firmware version is now 36.3.0. Notice that they changed the firmware version scheme between Jetpack 5 and Jetpack 6. The complete boot will fail here. Jumping back on the PC, let's flash a Jetpack 6 SD card. We'll select the Jetson Orin Developer Kit SD card image method. Then we'll start up Etcher and flash the SD card. I would advise using a different SD card than the Jetpack 5 one. Then remove the SD card from the PC, place it in the Jetson, and boot up the Jetson. Then we're in a little slice of heaven. Questions about licenses and what is your name? Finally, the Jetson restarts again. We're not done yet. Let's install JTOP. Another reboot. Now we run JTOP, and you see we are running Jetpack 6. Let's close this. We update, then we upgrade. This will update Jetpack 6 to the latest and greatest. Oh boy, another bootloader update. Let's reboot the Jetson again. This just in, another firmware update is happening. Good, it looks like it took. And here we are in Jetpack 6. It's a whole new world. Now let's install a SSD so that we can use Jetson AI containers. Turn the Jetson over and remove the SSD retaining screw. While holding the SSD at around a 45 degree angle, insert the SSD into the connector. Make sure it seats all the way. Then, reinstall the retaining screw. You'll need to press down on the SSD a little bit. Then go connect it back up to the peripherals. If the Jetson gets stuck in a boot loop after installing the SSD, open the boot manager and check the boot order. At the boot screen, press F11 to go directly to the boot manager. Use the down arrow to select UEFI SD device, then press enter. Another way to get into the boot manager is to hit escape to enter setup. This will tell you the firmware version and then you can just skip right down to the boot manager. Again, you want to select UEFI SD device and then hit enter. Then the Jetson will boot from the SD card. Let's start working on the SSD, we launch the Disks application. I'm using a one terabyte drive here. We'll select that. We're going to format the drive. Click Format. Are you sure you want to format the disk? I have literally lived up to this day. Yes, please. Password. Now let's create a partition. Click the plus sign. We'll make it the entire size of the drive. Let's be creative. Orin Nano SSD. And we want to make sure it's ext4. Create. Let's work on the mounting options. Click the gear icon, and we want to edit mount options. We want to turn off user session defaults. Make sure that mounted system startup is on. We change our mount point to slash ssd. And then, OK, password. Then we close the application, reboot, and make sure everything works.
Let's take a look at the drive, and as we expect, there it is. And it shows up in our file manager. Okay, now we are going to restart the Docker service and add ourselves to the Docker group so we don't have to use the command sudo. We add ourselves to the Docker group, add Docker to our groups. Let's make sure we did that correctly. There it is. Before we go changing it, let's make a copy of the Docker daemon JSON file. Backups are our friend. Now let's edit the daemon JSON file. We'll set the default runtime to NVIDIA. We'll just copy it over. Let's save the file. I found it works better when you do that. Now we restart it so that the changes will take effect. Now we copy our Docker files over to the SSD. First we stop Docker. And then we copy the files. We are going to store the files in a directory named Docker. That looks correct. Now we need to edit our daemon file again. We want to set our Docker data root. Save and close. Now we squirrel away our old Docker files. And finally, start up Docker and its subsystems. Looking good. Okay, let's pull an image and make sure it's working. I'll pull one I might need later. You can see that it's being stored on the SSD as it's being downloaded. Okay, let's reboot one more time and make sure it sticks. Sure enough, there it is. We'll go through some final verification steps here. If you run into trouble, you can look at the Serial Debug Console. I'll leave a link here in the description on how to do that. You'll need to be aware that if you run into real issues, you may need an Ubuntu PC system to reflash the Jetson from scratch. As always, thanks for watching.